Good day guys. Okay, so um, I thought I wanted to discuss one of the questions from the past year on electrostatics. Um, this is from 2018 and 19, right? Uh, as you can see in the figure above, shows two charges, Q1 and Q2. Um, Q1 has eight a positive 8 microcoulombs and Q2 has negative 6 microcoulombs and they're both spaced at um, 4 meters apart. And then we have two positions here, A and B, right? I'm oh, sorry, A and B, okay? And those are going to be involved in the questions in uh, uh, soon, all right? But let's look at the first, the first question, which is calculating the electric potential at points A and B, okay? So if you look at A, right? There are true contributions. So, talking about A, potential at A, there are true contributions. The first one is a positive charge. So, positive A. And then the second one is the contribution from the negative charge. So, V negative A, right? Since I know it's going to be, they, you're going to have K all, over, all around, I'm just going to take it out. So, K, so let me just remind you, K is 9 times 10 power of 9 Newton meter squared per coulomb per coulomb there we go okay now we only worry about the charge and the distance between them okay so the charge for q1 or the positive charge is eight micro coulombs and then the distance between a and the positive charge is three meters so three meters so and then the second one i know it has a charge of negative six micro coulombs and the distance between them is this hypotenuse and that hypotenuse has a length of 4 square plus 3 square so I'm just going to put it there 4 square plus 3 square right keying in all the numbers and what you will get is 1.32 times 10 to the power of 4 volts so that's about 13.2 so let me just 13.2 kilovolts okay So the next question, so VB, the next part of the question, which is the potential at B. Again, if we consider B, right, we have two contributions. The first one from the negative charge, negative B, plus the second one from the positive charge, which is V, positive B. And again, I'll take out the K, right, and I have negative 6 mu, or micro, Coulomb, and then the distance between them, which is 2. The second part, which is the positive charge, I'll have 8 microcoulombs, and then the distance between them, this one, is square root 2 square plus 4 square. So square root of 2 square plus 4 square. Okay? And this should give me an approximate an answer approximately at negative 1.09 to times 10 to the power of 4 volts which is approximately again 1 a 10.9 negative 10.9 kilovolts okay so let's look at the next question the next question asks calculate the electric potential difference between points a and b okay so remember that when did, whenever you see the word difference, you just write down delta. So difference A and B. That would be the potential at B minus the potential at A, right? So that is negative 1.09, right? Minus 1.32, both of them multiplied with 10 power of 4 volts. That would give you an answer of around 2.41 times 10 to the power of 4 volts, okay? Now the next question, which is on the determination of electric field at point A, okay? So, I know for a fact that um, this is distance-based, or at least axis-based. So let me just define the axis, all right? So let me just define the axis. I'll just use blue. So in this direction, left and right, I'll call x. Okay. And the y direction is up and down. So I'm just going to use y. Okay. I can easily calculate the electric field, the magnitude of electric field at any point, 
using the sensors and its charges, charges of the source, and I'll write down that the electric field depends upon the charge. So I'll just put I there, QI over R, I to whatever position that you want it from. So, so for example, A. Okay, so I can write down the first one, which is E1 from the charge 1. So K Q1 over R square. So R square, that means charge 1 to A. Um, K is again 9 times 10 power of 9. The charge Q1 is 8 microcoulombs. And this is between them is 3 meters, so 3 meters square. Right? That would give me 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newton per coulomb. Okay? On the other hand, if I calculate the electric field from the charge Q2, right? Again, I'll have the same thing. The difference is now it is Q2 to A squared. And I can easily find out what that is, which is this distance, which is the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. Okay? Because we're going to have a square here, this square root just vanishes. So I will have 9 times 10 power of 9, negative 6 microcoulombs over 4 squared plus 3 squared. And this should give me an answer of approximately 2.16 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton per Coulomb. Okay? Now, because we're dealing with x and y axis, let me just draw lines there. We have to think about the direction. All right? If I put a test charge at A, all right, I know that it will be attracted. Let me just use purple it will be attracted to the negative charge. So it's going to be going that direction. And it's going to be repulsive with Q1. So it's going to be in that direction. I can obviously resolve this into X and Y. So this is in the X direction. And then this is in the Y direction, right? Y direction. So I know I have to break down E2 into two separate direction. The easy way is just to worry about x first. So I know that E x is only contributed by the second charge. So E 2x right, equals to 2.16 and then multiplied because we're resolving it, right? And we talk about this angle. Okay? We talk about that angle and we want that to be the cos adjacent, so that's cos theta, right, times 10 to the power of 3, and that would give you, um, so 2.16 multiplied with, so adjacent, so that is 4 over 5 times 10 power of 3, and that is 1.73 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton per Coulomb. Okay? Now, the second part, which is E2Y, let me just write that down, EY, sorry, EY, you have to consider between E1 and E2, right? So, I will take that um, E2 is in the positive direction, and E1 to be the negative direction for the Y components, yeah? So that is E2Y, right, minus E1Y, which is just E1, right? So that is just E2Y minus E1, okay? So let's write that down. So E2Y is E2Y minus E1, okay? So E2Y, right, E2Y is merely, again, the value, so 2.16 times 10 to the power of 3 multiplied by sine theta, where theta is the angle here, so theta. Again, let me just draw that out. So this is theta, right? 
and since you're resolving the component into its y-axis, you have sine. Okay, and that is 2.16 times 10 to the power of 3. So sine that would give us 3 over 5. Okay, and then um, that would be that we and that and you will take e1 from that value. So let's see e1. So you have ey is equal to 2.16 times 3 over 5 times 10 power of 3 minus 8 times 10 power 3 giving you an answer of approximately negative 6.7 times 10 to the power of 3 newton per coulomb okay so just to remind you now that i have ex and i have ey let me write that down i have ex which is equals to <coughs> 1.73 times 10 power of 3 newton per coulomb, per coulomb. And then I have EY, which is equal to negative 6.7 times 10 to the power of 3 newton per coulomb. To find the resultant electric field is fairly straightforward. I will just put ER equals to the square root of EX plus, uh, squared plus EY squared and that should give us a, vi a value of 6.92 times 10 to the power of 3 newton per coulomb okay and then the direction is just the angle right the angle so the angle is 10 um, inverse tangent um, ey over ex right that should give us a value of negative 75 0.5 degrees okay so give that a try and we'll see you in i'll see you in the next video thank you